Hey, it's Adrian and today I'm really excited. I just got my first 4K monitor. So this is the Dell S3221QS monitor. So it's a 4K 32 inch curved display and it's true 4K. So 3840 by 2160 and it's running at 60 Hertz. So I didn't want to spend too much for my first 4K monitor and this is coming in at around 450 US on sale right now. And I'll mostly be using it for productivity 4k video editing and maybe some light gaming so if that sounds like something you're interested in please stick around the base that comes with this monitor is actually really impressive though so it's uh, it has a good amount of weight to it so this is an all metal plate and you feel it and then to secure it to this top stem here you would just screw in this area here and it has a little um, holder here for you to rotate so it's completely toolless now moving on to the stem of the base so this is completely plastic but on the inside there is a metal channel in here i don't know how much i can get that on camera but it is there and then this is where you would just snap this part into the monitor into the vase amount area installing the stand is really easy so once you attach this bottom metal plate here to the top you just angle it into the holes and you wait for that satisfying click and you're done. The build quality is pretty good on this monitor, especially considering the price when it goes on sale. So overall, it's a pretty planted monitor. It comes in at around 16 pounds or 7.2 kilograms, and that's due to this really heavy metal base. Now you can see if I just hit it or bump into it, there is some wobble. Otherwise, you're not gonna have any wobble if you're on a very sturdy desk or if you're typing or you know gaming pretty aggressively, it's pretty planted. The back of the monitor looks really nice. I'm a big fan of this type of off-white clean look. So you have the Dell logo up here and then this material here, it's actually textured. It's not a smooth finish and it's actually not reflective. It's matte, it may look very reflective, that's just because I have a lot of lights pointed at it. Now there's also the vase mount here. You could just remove the base and wall mount it if you like. And there's a cutout here so that you could run all of your cables for a nice clean setup. Here's an idea of what it looks like without all those lights pointed at it. So you can see it's not a very reflective surface. The curvature of this monitor, so it's 1800R and I've laid it down flat so you can see just how much it curves. Now at the start, I was a bit worried that it was gonna to be too much of a curve, but now that I've been using it, for a couple of weeks, I've actually grown used to it and I actually like it now. So you can see you have some grills at the top of the monitor just to dissipate heat. Taking a look at the inputs at the bottom of the monitor. So you have the lock here if you want to secure it at your desk. You have a power port, HDMI 1, HDMI 2. There's a button here that you could press down if you want to remove the stand. There's a display port 1.2. You have an audio out an upstream port so that whatever you plug into the monitor can communicate with your computer. You also have a type A port here and another type A port there and that one is for battery charging. Now these are all 3.2 gen 1 and they support speeds of up to 5 gigabits. There are no USB type C ports anywhere on the monitor. The bottom of the monitor has two downward firing speakers which can be found here. And here. The bottom right of the monitor when you're looking at it face on is where you'll find the controls. So there's a power button, menu button, and then just general adjustment buttons. And some of these can be programmed for shortcuts for features that you like to use often. The depth of that bottom stand is about eight inches. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna put this all the way up against a wall, as long as you have the monitor height high enough, you should be able to accommodate a soundbar or some speakers if you lay it down horizontally. Right now I have the monitor at its lowest setting and there's only about a half inch gap in between the bottom of the monitor and the desk. Now if I increase the monitor all the way to the highest setting, that's how high it goes and there's about a three and a half inch gap from the bottom of the monitor right to the desk. When it comes to angling the monitor, so I could angle it back and that's about a negative five degree difference or a positive 21 degree difference. While the monitor can't be rotated vertically, you can make some minor adjustments right or left just to get it where you want it. This is a 32 inch curved display. It is using a VA panel. It's a 16 by nine aspect ratio, and it's a true 4K resolution at 3840 by 2160 at 60 Hertz, and it does support variable refresh rate. Max brightness is 300 candelas, and it's 139 PPI. The contrast ratio is 3000 to 1 and the curve radius is 1800R. The monitor supports AMD FreeSync, it has an 8 millisecond response time and there are 5 watt speakers. There's two HDMI ports and one display port is display port 1.2. There's no DVI or VGA. In terms of USB connectivity, there's no Type-C ports on this but there are some 3.2 Gen 1 
type a usb ports it's also vesa compatible and you can adjust the tilt and height sharpness and clarity on this monitor are really excellent considering that it's a true 4k resolution now at 100 percent scale you can see everything is quite small it's going to be difficult to use day in day out but if you put it at 150 which is what's recommended it's much more manageable and this is what i've been using it at now while this monitor covers 99 percent of the srgb color gamut and 90 percent of dcip3 when I first powered the monitor on, I noticed that the color was a little bit off the white balance. It was more on the yellowish side, I would say. And what I did is I went to the Arting site, which is an excellent site. You should check it out. And I downloaded their color profile for this monitor. And as soon as I applied it, it completely fixed the white balance issue. And now everything looks really awesome and it's excellent to edit on. For viewing angles, I've rotated the monitor just a little bit because most people aren't going to be going, you know, at the very extreme of the monitor. And you can see it does get a little bit more dim towards the sides, but it's actually not that bad. I've seen much worse on other monitors. So in terms of viewing angles, it's a pass for me. So browsing around on Instagram, I have increased the zoom on the browser just so it shows up on camera. And you can see everything is really sharp really clear brightness levels are great i have it set to 100 percent right now normally it's at 75 but for the purposes of this video i've set it to 100 and con contrast is at 75 percent as well and really it's just a joy to use when it comes to reflection so i have it on a completely black screen and i'm about i would say 10 feet away from the monitor and i have the flashlight on my phone and you can see that it's pretty noticeable even though it's a matte finish it really does reflect However, since no one is going to be staring at a perfectly black screen, here's the same type of thing. And I'm using the LED on my cell phone. You can see a little bit of a reflection, but it's quite manageable, I think. When the screen is set to a white color, so you can see the center of the screen is pretty bright, but the corners of the screen are a bit dim, kind of like a vignette type of look. On a black background, there doesn't seem to be any noticeable or major backlight bleed. A really cool feature with this monitor is that you could do picture by picture or picture in picture. So right now I have it set to the picture by picture mode and you can see if I go ahead and use the mouse, I'm controlling the desktop display on my gaming computer. And if I go ahead and use my laptop, I'm controlling the display on my laptop. So that's really handy because you can have, you know, one display or one side of the display for work, one side for personal, or while you're working, you could have like a game playing or, you know, a console, sports game, what have you. So it's a really cool feature to be able to do that. Now, I haven't found any options where you can have the display split horizontally. It's always vertically, and you can change the order that the displays appear in the monitor menu options. When it comes to the picture in picture mode, you have a bunch more options. So let me just access those and I'll go through them really quickly. So right now it's set to picture in picture, and I can also go and change the size. So I can go ahead and make it a large picture in picture. So you can see now the bottom left display is much larger. I also have an option to change the position. So I can decide that I want it say top left and it's top left. You know, the, the other options you have are top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left. And of course you can do video swap again. So a major benefit of having a larger screen is the ability to kind of segment the screen however you like to suit your workflow. So if I just mouse over to the minimize window here, I can set this screen so it's, you know, half and half. And I can go back here and I could set it, say I want, you know, two small screens flanking on the side and then one main display. You have that ability. And I'm not using any special type of third-party software. This is natively supported in Windows. Feel free to skip past this part if you have zero interest in video editing. But for those of you who do video edit, having a larger screen, especially a 4K screen, really does make life easier. So you can see I have my entire timeline in full view and I have all the timeline tracks or video tracks, audio tracks. I have my assets over here and then the inspector and very easily I could just scrub through and if I want to cut anything trim, I can easily just expand it and scrub through the timeline and it's really a joy to use and it's really effortless on this monitor. In Fortnite, so the resolution set to 4K and all the settings are pretty much on high. So let's just see how that goes. I'm not a competitive gamer and I doubt I'll be using this monitor for much gaming. But while I was gaming, I didn't have any problems where I felt like the monitor response time wasn't quick enough for me to react. 
In terms of audio performance, it's actually not that bad considering that it's a monitor speaker. So they're about five watts. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the microphone about say 15, 16 inches away, and I'm gonna play it at 50% volume, then 100%. So you can hear that these get quite loud at 100%. I normally listen to them at 60 to 70% and that's plenty loud for me at 100%. It really does fill out the room and the sound might travel to another room. Now in terms of the audio performance, obviously, you know, with monitor speakers, you can only expect so much, but I think for most people it's probably going to be fine if you don't want to invest in a soundbar. Overall, I think this is an excellent monitor. If your workflow is mostly geared towards productivity, this is going to do pretty much everything you want. For those of you who are going to be editing photos or video, you can have your entire video or the entire photo in full view for you to edit. If you're gonna be doing any type of office work, you can have an Excel file, Word file, multiple files open so you can cross-reference data or copy data back and forth. And if you're gonna be doing gaming, you know, obviously it's not the ideal monitor. It doesn't have a high refresh rate, but it's pretty okay for occasional use or, you know, light gaming if you're bored. And if you're gonna do any type of media consumption like YouTube, this is excellent. It's a 4K display, it gets sufficiently bright. The built-in speakers, they're, they're decent. They'll definitely do the job. I'm really glad I got this monitor. I did research a bunch of other 4K monitors and I got to the point where it was like analysis paralysis. It was just so many specs, so many things to think of. And I had narrowed it down to a couple of brands, but this ended up going on sale and I have used Dell monitors in the past with great results. So I decided to take a chance on this and I'm really glad that I did. It's an excellent monitor. I haven't been let down with any part of it so far, especially since I'm not really using it for gaming. So if you see this on sale and you're looking for a 4K monitor, um, definitely go for it. If you're worried that it's curved, Similar to how I was, I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue. It looks like a big curvature, but it really isn't. I got used to it within, you know, two or three days, and now I don't know, even notice it, and I actually like it. If I missed anything in my review, which I'm probably sure that I did, just leave a question in the comments down below, and I really do my best to reply to all comments. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. It really does help me out a lot, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.